nation. Jesus Christ. 
God, we wait your coming soon. Jeff and Sharon, thank you so much for that. On this first Sunday of the new church calendar year, the first Sunday in Advent, I bid you welcome to worship at the Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit. I extend welcome to all of you gathered here in the sanctuary floor, to those of us who are, those who are gathered with us in our streaming platforms, welcome. And special welcome to visitors that we have with us today. I hope you find the service meaningful and will introduce yourself to me or to Pastor Camp following our time together. Following the 8.30 service, that is technically at 9.30 in the Center for Faith and Life, uh, Pastor Roger Tim will continue his presentation on the Christian family tree and its various denominational branches. That's at 9.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Estimate of giving cards for 2023 have been distributed. Uh, we ask you to prayerfully consider your response and return the cards to the office through the offering plates in the back of the sanctuary, the box in the narthex, of the church office through the mail, whatever is most convenient for you. Under the category of pastoral concerns, pastoral care, Ed Roth has fallen and broken a leg. He is hospitalized and has recently undergone surgery. And also to remember Gordon Huff in our prayers, he has ongoing medical concerns. In a moment, we'll begin with a special addition to our liturgy to reflect the season of Advent. I just wanted to note that Sue and Rob Smith will be assisting us with the lighting of the Advent candle today. So at this point, we will continue with the Advent candle lighting and the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Will you please stand? light into the world. We long for the day when the things of darkness 
selfishness and greed, suffering and oppression shall be no more. One candle to remind us of the prophets who believed in God during dark days and looked forward to the coming of Christ. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. Let us pray. Living God, we thank you for faithful people of every age. We pray that we too may have faith in spite of the darkness of our times and may look for the coming of Jesus into our world. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our Prince of Peace, our mighty God, our wonderful Counselor, who is and was and is to come. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Maoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. 
for out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. The good news from Matthew, the 24th chapter. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, and one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Lord, we wait impatiently for you. You are with us in your word. Let us pray. Open our hearts, Lord, that your word and your love may light our way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy New Year. Advent has arrived, and with it, the beginning of a new church year, and the season where we are reminded to continually watch and wait, both for Christ to be born into our midst and for Christ to come again. We're also reminded to get ready, to be ready for that day, whenever it might be. So as a person of faith, what do you want to be sure to accomplish in your life? What do you not want to leave undone? What do you need to do to get ready for the advent of Christ? In today's gospel lesson, Jesus says to his disciples, But about that day and hour, no one knows. He had been speaking with them about the time that the Son of Man would come and earth and heaven would pass away. The day is coming, he said, and you must be ready. He reminded the disciples that as Noah was preparing and building the ark, people were still eating and drinking and going about their lives with no concern until the flood came and they weren't ready. I heard a story about someone else who wasn't ready. A number of years ago, a man left for a vacation in Florida. His wife was on a business trip and would travel there separately, meeting him a day later. So when the man arrived in Florida and reached his hotel, he unpacked and found himself with some unstructured time on his hands. He decided to go for a walk. As he passed a cyber cafe, he decided he would send his wife a quick email. He didn't have a smartphone. So he paid for some time on one of the computers at the cyber cafe, and since it was a strange computer, he had to type in her email address from memory. Unfortunately, he missed one letter in that email address, and his note was directed instead to a woman whose husband had passed away only the day before. When the grieving widow checked her email, she took one look at the message and let out a scream. Her family rushed into the room and saw this email on her computer screen. Dearest wife, just got checked in. Everything is prepared for your arrival tomorrow. 
P.S. It sure is hot down here. <laughs> Kidding aside, would we be ready for Christ's arrival tomorrow? Jesus said, but about that day and hour, no one knows. So again, in your life of faith, what do you want to be sure to accomplish? What don't you want to be left undone? What do you need to do to get ready? On a more serious note than that trip to Florida, a man opened the drawer of his wife's bureau and lifted out a tissue wrap package, opening it to reveal a beautiful lace slip. He said to his daughter, your mother bought this 10 years ago. She was saving it for a special occasion. I guess this will be the occasion. And he took the slip and put it on the bed with the other clothes that they were taking to the funeral parlor. He said to his daughter, learn from this. Every day you're alive is a special occasion. Jesus said about that day and hour, no one knows. And a little further in the passage, he said, keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. At first glance, this lesson may seem depressing. It did to me at first. But then as I thought about it, I realized that the passage is not about death, but about life. It's about how to live your life, how to be alive and active in faith so that we are ready. It's about getting ready in hope for the arrival of God's promised kingdom. And it is the getting ready that is the important part. And it's also the getting ready that helps us get through the hard times. Another story. There was a piano teacher named Herman. One night he attended a university concert and the performing pianist suddenly became ill while performing an extremely difficult piece and had to leave the stage. Herman rose from his seat in the audience, walked onto the stage, sat down at the piano, and with great mastery completed the performance. Later that evening at a party, one of his students asked Herman how he was able to perform such a demanding piece so beautifully and with no rehearsal. And he replied, in 1939, when I was a budding young concert pianist, I was arrested and placed in a Nazi concentration camp. Putting it mildly, my future looked Leap. But I knew that in order to keep the flicker of hope alive, that I might someday play again, I needed to practice every day. I began by fingering a piece from my repertoire on the boards of my bed late one night. The next night I added a second piece, and soon I was running through my entire repertoire. I did this every night for five years as I was incarcerated there. It so happened that the piece I played tonight was part of that repertoire. That constant practice is what kept my hope alive. Every day I renewed my hope that I would one day be able to play my music again in freedom. It was being ready, being ready to play that got Herman through those years of death and toil and misery in the concentration camp. It was being ready that provided him with hope And it also provided him with purpose and with perseverance. It was being ready that helped him live beyond his awful circumstances and toward a life restored. Jesus knows that it is in getting ready that we will get through the ups and downs of life. Some may think they have nothing to offer, no way to get ready with hope. But every day, there is more you can do to bring fullness and purpose and active, vibrant faith into your life and the lives of others. Someone who had to go into a nursing home for a rehab inspired me when she said, you know, Pastor, I like to be useful, and I can be useful while I'm here. I look around and see who needs some cheering up, and I take some time to talk with them and it helps me, and it helps them while we're getting stronger. And I pray for and sometimes with them as we work at getting better through all the ups and downs and starts and stops of rehab. She was getting ready, living in this day while getting ready for the next, 
by loving her neighbors, by looking around and cheering folks up and praying for them. And in the process, her life was becoming richer and fuller. The first Sunday of Advent is here. It's a time when we think about getting ready for the birth of the baby in the manger and for our Lord to come again to us. But getting ready in Advent is no different than getting ready each and every day. It's about deciding what is important and practicing and living life with faith and hope and perseverance until that day and hour come, until Christ comes again. And Jesus said, about that day and hour, no one knows. So as a person of faith, what do you want to be sure to accomplish in your life? How do you, as a loved child of God, practice being ready for the advent of Christ? Think on these things. Do these things. Live these things with faith and hope and perseverance for they are done in the love and light and promises of Christ. Amen. Let us profess our Advent Creed. We believe in God, robed in splendor, veiled in mystery, ruler alike of darkness and light. We encounter God in Jesus Christ, who was tortured and put to death, but whose radiance could not be quenched, whose touch brings a blaze of glory to a dull, drab world, reviving the weary, healing the wounded, dazzling the satisfied. We walk with God, guided by the light of God's loving spirit who enters the shadowed places of our hearts and leads us into truth and life. We wait for God, for the fulfillment of God's promises, for the time when darkness will hold no fear and the light will no longer blind, but creation will be made whole once more and God's peace will reign forever. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that long for God's presence. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. We are waiting, Jesus. Come and be with us soon. God of peace, you judge the nations. 
beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor, strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. We pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth. We are waiting, Jesus. Come and be with us soon. God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who are hunger, who hunger. Comfort the grieving and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care. We pray especially for Stephanie, Louise, Becky, Leah, Corbin, Darlene, Jace, Robbie, Judith, Paul, Pam, Pat, Claire, Dawn, Leah, Darren, Kyle, Tom, Donald, Ann, Janice, Greg, Marilyn, Scott, Eric, Dave, Becky, Adam, Glenn, Jane, Denny, Millie, Lisa, Deborah, Lisa, Edie, Marilyn, Patricia, Reinhold, Mary, Jen, Fred, Rosie, Debbie, Janie, John, Donna, Jim, Lester, Karen, Tom, Lisa, Douglas, Rachel, Nancy, Grayson, Nina, Asley, Joyce, Frank, Katie, Darla, Rosellen, Helen, Anne, Nick, Ray, Debbie, Ross, Val, Dave, Robert, Denise, Ksenia, Renee, Phil, Andrew, Fred, Pete, Jean, Peggy, Sherry, Wilma, Al, Grace, Tony, Tori, Melanie, Mike, Elaine, Joan, Vicki, Suzanne, Dawn, Allie, Doris, Judith, Betty Mae, and Gordon. In times of sorrow for the family and friends of Catherine and Elaine, we are waiting, Jesus. Come and be with us soon. Guide congregations in transition or conflict. Give wisdom to congregational councils, call committees, and ministry leaders. Keep us alert to unexpected opportunities for mission. We are waiting, Jesus. Come and be with us soon. God of solace and comfort, be present with the people of Colorado Springs and Chesapeake, Virginia, as they suffer the aftermath of mass shootings. Give comfort through your response to their prayers and help through the efforts of caring neighbors. Give us all wisdom and sound judgment to realize that guns are not an answer to whatever our concerns may be. Guide us from teaching each other the need of violence to settle our differences. Help us always see each other as one of your children. We are waiting, Jesus. Come and be with us soon. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. We are waiting, Jesus. Come and be with us soon. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
an opportunity to give thanks to the members of the congregation for their support of the ministries of Holy Spirit Church. Your financial support is greatly appreciated. Your time and talent are likewise appreciated. Contributions today can, of course, be made in the offering plates at the back of the uh, chancel, but also in the narthex, there is a, a box, I believe. I'm, excuse me, I misspoke that. The offering plates are in the back of the sanctuary. There is no box in the narthex. We'll try that again. You can also give online or you can send it to the church. We are grateful for all of your responses. We continue with the great Thanksgiving. Would you please stand? Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, for the night is nearly gone and your light is dawning in the darkness. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and you send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread and wine and money and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. <clears throat> Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. In your child, Jesus the Christ, you have called all peoples to yourself and taught us your ways. When he was killed, you raised him to new life and promised a day when he will come to an unexpected hour to gather up your faithful ones and bring them home to your house so that the weapons and works of darkness might be discarded and all might be securely clothed in Christ Jesus himself. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer our thanks and praise at all times through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord, accompany us on our journey and keep teaching us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed. Blessed be God who is our bread. May all the world be clothed and fed. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> the body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, the eternal word 
who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. are we waiting for the coming of Jesus? How are we waiting with patience and hope? Go in peace. Soon we are going to see the King. Thanks be to God.